Hi guys, Bryn here from BWS TT. First of all, a massive thank you for clicking on this video. You're now going to learn about the N249 system. So one of the most popular videos on my channel to date is the N249 delete video. Seems to be something that a lot of people are interested in how to do. But what I'm wondering is, do those people that are deleting it know what it actually does? So let's go through the basics of the air intake system. We've got cold air coming into the turbo, hot air coming out of the turbo, goes through the intercoolers, comes out as cold air, through the throttle, and in the intake manifold, then into the engine, where mixed with fuel and a bit of spark, we get a bang. And that's what makes the engine go. That's under full throttle, or part throttle, under boost. What happens when we come off boost, when we've got all this pressurised air that we're then closing the throttle plate and it's got nowhere to go. So, as you come off the throttle, the ECU controls this valve here, which utilises vacuum that is stored here by building up from the intake manifold. And it uses that vacuum to control this valve here, which is the diverter valve. So then the hot air can come round here, through here, back into the cold side of the turbo intake. So that pressurised air is no longer a problem, that's what the divert valve does, and that's that whoosh noise that you hear as you come off the throttle. That is all controlled by the N249. So as you take your foot off the throttle, within a split second the ECU has activated this valve before it closes this, so there's no uh, split second of build up before it releases it. If you were to bypass this system, which is the N249 delete, essentially you're running a fresh line from the intake manifold, missing out all of that straight onto the top of the diverter valve. Okay, so what you're waiting for is the throttle plate to close, vacuum to be generated in the intake manifold, and that vacuum is then used to control that valve and bypass the air. Pretty simple, right? So obviously on Facebook, people ask all the time about the N249 delete, and there's always a post that gets linked in those comments. And it's to do with a study, uh, I believe it was on Audi A4, uh, and what it was saying was is that under part throttle, the N249 can control the diverter valve to allow this cold air to come in this way and bypass the turbo at part throttle. Now the reason for that is because uh, at partial throttle, you don't want the restriction of the turbo stopping air getting into the system. So that makes sense and I can get on board with why that would be a good thing for economy and for part throttle driving. But the only time that will ever make a difference, okay, uh, so we've got, on our boost gauge, we've got naught there. We've got 20 PSI there and we've got minus 25, that thing there, yeah? And so when we're on boost, we're going around this way and we're hitting some boost. When we're at idle, we're all the way back here, okay? So at, at idle, with this amount of vacuum, this valve will be open. And as we put our foot on the throttle to start moving, you'll notice if you've got a boost gauge that we hover around this area, okay? Now, if we're still in this area, even without the N249, this diverter valve will be partially open, okay? It's only as we get to this point here and above where the diverter valve not being open would make a difference, okay? That's a very specific thing that that programming could be helpful for, okay? But on the TTs, I haven't found any evidence that that is actually utilised. So, does it make a difference if you delete the N249 or not? So you've probably seen lots of people say, I deleted the N249, the car feels loads better, okay? Now, if you've got a healthy N249 system and you remove it and bypass it and just put a fresh piece of line in, you're probably not gonna feel a difference. The people that are feeling a difference have probably got cracks or splits in something to do with the N249, which is why the car now feels better. Now, as I just said, you can remove the N249 or keep it on there and it really doesn't make a difference to how the car drives. It doesn't feel any different. 
Uh, and anyone that says they can feel a difference is probably very, very marginal, all right? So why did Audi spend so much money developing a system when cars for years before that think of RS causes and things like that didn't need extra valves to control the dump or the diverter valve? Well, there is one additional purpose of the N249 that we have not discussed. So the N75 is the valve that is used to control the turbo, okay? Now it dictates how much boost the turbo generates and that is by using a vacuum line from here and that vacuum source is used to control the boost by opening or closing the wastegate. I don't want to go too much into detail on how that works but if that fails the ECU can tell that, it ha that the turbo hasn't responded the way that it was expecting it can utilize the N249 to open the diverter valve and to stop boost being generated. Okay, so that could prevent a massive overboost situation which could blow the car up. So, while the chances of this failing in a catastrophic way are slim, it is still a risk. So, that is why if your N249 system is completely healthy, you should probably think about leaving it on. Okay, if it's knackered, then by all means bypass it. But check the health of the boost hoses in relation to the N75, okay? And do more regular checks on that moving forwards. Because if this does go wrong, you don't have that fail safe. Like I say, the chances of that happening are slim, but I've experienced it myself. So yeah, okay, I work on these all day, every day, and I've probably seen it two or three times. But that two or three times that it happens, it can really cause issues. So, now that you've got this knowledge, it's down to you to decide whether you wanna do an N249 delete because it's broken. If you wanna tidy the engine bay up, do you wanna delete it or do you want to relocate it? Or, do you want to just delete it because everyone says, yes, delete it, and it sounds loads better, and it will drive loads better. The decision is up to you. I hope I've given you enough information to make that informed decision. If I have, then please hit like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Until next time, I'll see you later. Cheers, guys.